Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to show you how to take a normal Angular application which is not being server-side rendered and we are going to show you how easy it is to add Angular Universal to it and start rendering it also on the server side and let's remember that Angular Universal also gives us the very interesting possibility of doing build time pre-rendering of the application which can bring us the best of both worlds and by that I mean that with the new Angular Universal it's very simple to create an Angular application that returns a lot of HTML when it gets first loaded from the server and therefore uh, having great startup performance and therefore being SEO compatible and also compatible with social media crawlers without for us having to use a node server on the backend to render the application in response to an HTTP request. This means that we can have an Angular application up and running in production without even needing a node server at runtime. Now, how cool is that? We are going to dive deep into Angular Universal pre-rendering later on in the course. Right now, I would like to show you how easy it is today to add Angular Universal to an existing Angular application. Let's then start by confirming that the application that we have here running on the screen does not have any server-side rendering yet. So we have started this application here on the command line using the command npm start. If we now switch here to a larger window where we have the application up and running, if we inspect the HTML that we have received from the server using view page source, we are going to see that, that as expected, this is a plain single page application without any server side rendering. We have here a root application root tag that is going to contain our Angular application. Angular is loaded here via these uh, script tags. Angular then takes over the page. It makes a backend HTTP request that we can confirm that was done here by using the dev tools and switching here to the network tab. We can see when we refresh the application that indeed there is an HTTP request here for fetching the data from our backend and then Angular is going to take this JSON payload and is going to render it on the page by generating the DOM nodes that correspond to the data that we want to display using the component template, using the templates of our Angular application. So it's important to understand that the front-end Angular rendering engine that is running here on the browser does not generate HTML directly. Instead, the Angular client-side rendering engine is going to produce directly DOM nodes that then get applied to the existing DOM. As we have discussed earlier on in this course, the blank page that we are receiving here from the server comes with a couple of disadvantages. Namely, the application is going to be displaying a blank page at startup time that might be confusing to the user. It might lead to the user thinking that the application is slow and unresponsive. And also, the blank page is not search engine optimization friendly or social media crawler friendly. Let's now see what would it take to turn this existing Angular client application into a server-side rendered application. We are going to switch back here to our IDE and we are going to stop our development server. Now here in the terminal window from the root folder of our repository where our package.json code is, we are going to be running the following command using the Angular CLI. ng add at ng universal slash express dash engine. Now you don't need to run this command because we have already executed the command here in our sample repository. And we are going to describe exactly what this command does in the next lesson of this course. So this is the current form of the command that we need to run. This tends to change over time. You might want to check in the Angular documentation if this is still the correct command. The good news is that once you run this command, you now have a ready-to-use Angular Universal application. 
Before going any further and before explaining in detail how the Angular Universal application works and what this command did exactly to our project, let's first confirm that we can now do server-side rendering. In order to do that, if we open here our project's package.json, we are going to see that inside it we have here a series of Angular Universal specific NPM scripts. This acronym SSR stands for server side rendering. So we have here four new package.json scripts that were added by our ng add command. So this command here is going to build our server side rendered application. It will first do a build of the front end and then it's going to build the server part of our application. This command here, serve SSR, is going to enable us to serve the production version of our Angular Universal application and pre-render is going to enable us to pre-render the Angular application at build time. And we're going to go in much more detail into these commands later on. We also have dev server side rendering. So this is a development version of our Angular Universal application. We can run our Angular application in hot reload mode. So this means that whenever we make a change to the application, we're going to apply the same change both to the client part and to the server side of our application. Let's have a look at server side rendering in action then. I'm going to be using now the development server side rendering mode. Let's go ahead and run the command npm run dev ssr. This command is going to take a while to execute, but once the command completes, you are going to have an Angular Universal live development server running on the usual Angular CLI port localhost 4200. Let's then now switch to a larger window and see this Angular Universal application in action. So I'm going to go ahead and reload the application. And as we can see, the application is up and running and everything looks the same as before, like we have shown in the beginning of this lesson. But the difference is if we now open here the page source containing the HTML returned by the development server, we're going to see that this time around, unlike before, we got a lot of HTML from the server. So this is now very far from being an empty HTML page. You're going to see here a lot of CSS. We're going to go through it. This is appended to an Angular application at build time. But if we scroll down, we're going to see here the HTML of the application. We can see here the Angular application root and we can see here a lot of HTML. In order to make more sense of this HTML, I'm going to go ahead and copy it all and I'm going to switch back here to our development environment and we're going to take a further look at this HTML but we're going to format it a bit so that we can read it better. I'm going to create here a new file that I'm going to call tmp.html and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paste the HTML that we got from the server. Now I'm going to go ahead and select all the HTML and I'm going to quickly format it with command alt L. So this has just formatted here the HTML. It has essentially pretty printed it. Let's then now have a look at it. We can see that the server side rendered application has here a lot of CSS. So let's go ahead and start by searching for the HTML body tag here in our document. We can see here that below the body tag, we have here a lot of HTML. We have here a side navigation bar. And if we scroll down, we are going to see here a series of material cards. We can see here a material card for the Angular Universal in-depth course. We also have here other cards for the security course, for example. So as we can see, the HTML that we are receiving from the Angular Universal Live Development Server is no longer an empty blank HTML page. This is now a full HTML payload that can be directly passed to the browser and the browser can display to the user the complete application immediately at application startup time. So as we can see, running a single Angular CLI command on our command line has immediately transformed our standard Angular application into an Angular Universal application. 
So in our next lesson, we're going to understand exactly how does this work, how does Angular Universal work, and what changes were made to our project in order to enable server-side rendering. And we are also going to be covering all the other NPM scripts that we have here available besides the development Angular Universal server. So all of this is coming up in the next few lessons.